sure you are too. <laughs> they might all end up on the floor, and that's okay. That's a good place to be, right? Just to be my catcher. <laughs> she has been my catcher before. It does not work out well. <laughs> We're both going down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to introduce Debbie Pallon. Come on up. Another prophetic mouth of the Lord based in Texas. She's going to super blast us like we haven't already been super blasted. Thank you, Leslie. Well, I'm just honored to be here with you. Um, it's just been a true honor for me to be in the company of all the ministers that are here, that have been here this weekend, and I love your church. It's just the most welcoming, heartwarming place, so thank you very much for having me. I'm going to talk a little bit about a testimony of mine. It's, um, it's on healing. It's about a healing that I experienced, and it's about the mindset for healing. And I think the Lord has a theme on that today. It seems like we've been talking a lot about our mindset and getting our mindsets aligned with God. Um, I had an experience several years ago. I was out of town on a business meeting. Uh, we were attending some meetings, and I suddenly got this excruciating pain in the center of my chest. It was a bring you to your knees, uh, take your breath away kind of a pain. It just came out of nowhere without any warning. To make a long story short, I'm going to skip through all the appetizer and go straight for the meat here just for time's sake. But I flew home that afternoon. The pain was just unrelenting. It was unbearable, and it scared me because I felt like something that was that excruciating, that painful, had to be something very serious. So when I got home, I told my husband, just take me to the ER. Something's not right. And so we did. We loaded up in the car and head to the hospital. And on the way, I'm feeling so weak. My body is its just like strength is, is, was sucked out of me. And on the way there, I just prayed and said, Jesus, help me. I think I'm dying because I did. I thought I was dying. And so to make, again, make the long story short, I'm in the hospital getting a battery of tests being run on me, trying to figure out what's going on. Is this heart related? Is it lung? Do I have a blood clot somewhere? Is there something wrong with an organ? What's happening? And I'm laying in a hospital bed and I'm getting weaker and weaker. I could hardly set up. And in fact, it was like a heavy weight was on my shoulders. I was beginning to be bent over in this weakness. And I heard the voice of Jesus say to me, he said, when you ask me to help you, did you mean it? And I wasn't sure that that was him or what I'd heard. And he repeated again, when you ask me to help you, did you mean it? And of course, I said, yes, Lord. Yes, I need your help. And so he said to me, get up out of that bed, stand on your feet, put your shoulders back, lift your head up. And as I began to crawl out of the bed, I literally, as I put my one leg and second leg over the side of the bed, I felt strength just back into my body again. And I heard Jesus say to me, cast off that garment of infirmity and cast off the characteristics of one who is infirmed and put on the characteristics of one who has been healed. And I knew immediately what he was talking about. It goes back to the story of blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, where blind Bartimaeus was was a beggar. He was on the side of the road. He was begging for alms. That was his source of livelihood. When he heard that Jesus was approaching, he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But the, the, the disciples that were with him and the crowds that were with him were trying to shut him up. But he cried out all the more, 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, he was determined because he knew where the healer was, there's healing. And he was determined to get to the healer. And Jesus called for him. He said, no, bring him to me. So the disciples said, the master calls. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus had called for him to come, Bartimaeus immediately cast off his garment. And what is significant about Bartimaeus' garment is back in those days, if you were blind or you were handicapped and your source of income was to beg, you wore a special garment. You wore a special cloak that identified you as a beggar. It was your license to beg. And when Jesus called for Bartimaeus, he immediately cast off his, his, his livelihood, his license to beg. He cast off that identity of one who was blind. And that was even before Jesus had touched him. You see, he had a mindset for healing. He was ready to receive it. You see, the work was already done for us. It's already been done for us, but for him, he needed that touch before he could receive it. So when, when, Jesus, um, when, Jesus, when Jesus saw that faith, he says to Bartimaeus, what would you have for me? And Bartimaeus says, that I might receive my sight. And he says, you go, your faith has made you whole. And so when Jesus came to me that day on my hospital bed, he, had, he came to rescue me from a mindset that I had begun to take on. You see, I began to conform to that infirmity. I began to bend over physically. I not only was bending over physically, but in my mind, I was taking on those characteristics of one who was so infirmed, and the fear was gripping me. You see, this thing was beginning to lord over me. And Jesus had to come first off and get me into agreement with him to get my mind in the right place to receive the work that he had already done. You see, we don't have to ask Jesus to do something that he has already done. The work is finished. We have to get ourselves in a place of receiving that finished work. And so he had to get me to that place. And he said, when you ask me, did you mean it? Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready to receive your healing? And he is asking those of you who may be in this room today. Maybe you came today and you said, you know, maybe today I'm going to receive my healing. Maybe you've been struggling with some sort of, of illness, some sort of disease, some spirit of infirmity that has plagued you. I don't care what it's called. Is it cancer or heart disease? Maybe it's arthritis. Maybe it's a problem with your back, your structure. Maybe it's kidney disease, some kind of metabolic problem. Whatever it's named, that thing is under the feet of Jesus. It was covered by the stripes on Jesus' back. And Jesus asked you the question. He asked you the question. He says, when you have asked for healing, did you mean it? And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to quickly stand up right where you are. Just stand up right where you are. Get up on your feet. Put your shoulders back. Lift your head up. And you cast off that cloak of infirmity. Just cast it off. Symbolically, get it off of you. You say no more and get it off of you. And you cast off those characteristics of one who is infirmed. Cast off the characteristics of a cancer patient. Cast off the characteristics of a heart patient. Cast off the characteristics of one who is bent over, weak, full of malady and infirmed. And you put on the characteristics of one who has been made whole, one who has been healed, one who has been delivered, one who has been set free. And I want you to make this declaration right now with me. I am a servant only of the Lord God Almighty. I am a child of the King of Kings. 
I have one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. His stripes have healed me. His blood has redeemed me. I do not bow to the spirits of infirmity or sickness and disease. I am free. I am free. I am free. Now I want you to give him thanks. And I want you to give him a shout of praise. And I want you to shout like a captive who has been set free. You have been made free in Jesus' name. You are free. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. You don't bow to spirits of infirmity. You do not bow to sickness and disease. You are free.